Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Egyptian Empire. Um, thank you uh, for sticking with this series uh, for as long as you have. Uh, this is something that I'm really enjoying uh, making these videos. I'm, I'm enjoying YouTube again. I'm excited to make the content because uh, I love video games. And I'm uh, really, really looking forward to uh, each and every time a video goes live uh, to see what feedback there is and and so for those of you who are watching I, I thank you it's been uh, it's it's a blast I'm having a really good time and uh, I I see myself doing this uh, for quite an extended period of time into the future um, I'm striving to get better uh, you'll notice that this video uh, is longer than the last few Civ 5 episodes have been uh, that is intentional. I'm going to uh, do my best when I have the time um, to put forward. Just because Civilization Five is such an in-depth game that the 20 minutes can can make you feel wanting. And so I'm going to release at least uh, the Thursday and the Friday video for sure are going to be an hour in length. And then I thought uh, Saturday afternoon would be a good time uh, for a live stream. Uh, so, for those of you who are watching, uh, be sure to leave a comment down below um, what, what time would be good for you uh, on Saturday afternoon. Now, if you didn't catch what I just did there, uh, this Colosseum building, uh, you build it in your cities and it gives a bonus to your empire's happiness. Our happiness right now is resting at zero. So that's something that we desperately kind of need, and so that's that's the decision I made in terms of research. Even though I'd I'd like the particular benefits of other uh, researchers, um, researches uh, other technologies more. Um, right now, construction just in terms of the Colosseum uh, seems to be our best bet. Even though we are building a plantation, I guess I didn't really take into account. That's the problem with picking up a game a couple hours. Um, or a couple days later, rather, because we do have truffles on the way. Uh, and we do have dyes almost completed. So let's make this camp. So we are going to get plus eight happiness. Uh, relatively quick off the bat. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to move away from that just because we are going to get plus eight happiness. The one thing we definitely need is money. Uh, and so I really do want to be building the market. So let's do that first, then hold down shift. We'll finish up construction and perhaps go for engineering because that's going to give us the bridge and other good bu buildings. But we'll see where we are because we also want fishing boats. All right, a unit needs orders. That's right, we're clearing this up because we want to have a bonus for both of those guys. And one of them, somebody wanted us to build the Oracle. I forget who. Uh, but somebody wanted us to build the Oracle, and we said sure, because it's going to benefit us anyways. Uh, okay, so we've got... That's interesting. That's... Let's do that. Because uh, I don't want this guy to get a good hit on my warrior, simply because we're going to need this warrior to beat down on, on that barbarian, because he is fortified. All right. Three turns away from an archer there, then we'll get that guy constructing a library. And once this is done, I think our best bet, uh, we're going to want to start expanding our empire with some settlers. Excellent, excellent assist by the city-state here. Although us helping out with the attack didn't get us influence with him, so that's unfortunate. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do... We're not getting a flanking bonus with this guy. And this is the guy that's going to give us a lot of damage. As you can see, this, this unit is facing this way, and so we're, we're not really attacking their flank. This guy on the other end, you can see it pops up here, is getting a flanking bonus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack with him first, because he's going to get the flanking bonus. That's going to turn the unit around. And as you can see, now this guy has a flanking bonus. So that's the kind of... <laughs> just little little minor details like that will, will allow you to, to pick away at, at enemy units quicker. Okay. And as you can see, Kathmandu 
Where is Kathmandu? Down here? Nope. Over here? There we go. Um, so Kathmandu has been keeping an eye. They're hostile, as you can see. Um, and so hostile personality city-states, uh, they tend to hate other city-states. And so they want me to demand tribute from these guys, but these guys aren't going to give me tribute because they're not afraid of my military. But it's just um, that those are the those are what those different personality traits mean. You'll see you'll see friendly, you'll see neutral, and you'll see hostile. I think there might be a couple others that I'm forgetting about. I don't like the archer appearing, uh, but we should be able to kill. Maybe we'll see. If I attack. Okay, if I attack him with my scout, that's... The archer's probably going to kill him. Um, but the scout is sort of... Uh, I don't know if that was a good idea. Because I'm not going to be able to kill the warrior here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, we did kill him. Okay, so that was worth it. Because now we've just gotten huge influence bonuses with both of these city states uh, so now we're we're getting we're getting benefits from them now we're getting benefits from them we're probably uh, silver and die okay but we're probably getting uh, food bonuses from the city states and whatnot now uh, so that was major so if this scout dies from this archer that was totally worth it um, even though probably just <laughs> it was a matter of patience, but I don't know if that archer was going to shoot my warrior if I didn't attack him, so. Okay, we're going to start building the road, I think. Maybe we get this pasture up before. And we'll have this guy continue constructing his little road uh, while we move forward. Okay. So we have this guy sitting up where we want our next city to go. Okay, the archer. I don't think that was the archer's turn. But that spearman just walked right over him. Alright. So we definitely want to be advancing our uh, military units. <laughs> it appears. Um, okay. We've got a pasture coming here. This guy very luckily survived. Does he? He already has healing thing. So let's give him the visibility range. Um, and then let's just fortify until healed. This guy we're going to bring down. Let's spot another decent place for a city. So we've got you camping out here. We want more iron would be nice. Like I, I'm looking at this six iron and I really want it. But there's just not anything that's really enticing about that spot. And so I'm thinking I want to perhaps get a quality city. If I go here, we're at war with Packle pretty much. Packle's going Packle's gonna to take anything that I sell here. Uh, and I don't want that. Hmm, hmm, hmm. A little bit of a tricky situation we find ourselves in. That's um, one of the negatives of being up in a corner of a continent. Uh, perhaps we capitalize on the big food area around here. Uh, this is a city that's going to get rapid, rapid, rapid growth. Uh, over here is a huge food area with two citrus, but again, too close to Packle, too far away from our support. So maybe... Our best bet, then, is to capitalize on this. Because this area, if we settle right here, we're going to get dyes uh, relatively close to the capital. And if we put a granary in, that gives us plus one food to all wheat resources and all deer resources. And as you can see, we've got one of each in the first circle, uh, one in the second circle. We've also got sheep, which is going to be giving us food regardless. And then um, on the third circle, we can pop out to the deer and, and, and work that as well. So this is a city that's going to grow to be quite large, um, and that's beneficial. So perhaps we go do that first, uh, simply because we're not really going to be using utilizing the sea too much in the early game, uh, because it is all one continent. Uh, so that's probably what we're going to do first. 
and this is towards another player uh, so we don't want them impeding on our terrain so let's move this guy right down here that's where he's going to camp out it's also going to um, clear the fog of war so that no barbarian encampment encampments can uh, pop up there there was one in this area wasn't there there's was one right down here i wonder if that's been dealt with i think it i think we had gotten that that message that it had or did we get we got the message about Kathmandu I think okay so we do have the ability to train swordsmen I think if I go into production do we not yet not yet is that iron working yes it's iron working okay so we want because our, our gold our gold is is worrisome at the moment. Now, looking at looking at the future, uh, in terms of what our strategy is going to be for winning the game, there's several ways to win the game. Got an Arabian spearman. Okay, it looks like they're just scouting with that guy. Hopefully, that's not wishful thinking on my part. Uh, I'll probably get him to build a plantation before he goes. I don't know. We'll see. I like constructing roads um, just because it, it makes me feel safe. Some, like, you know, certain people like to wait later. Uh, each road tile improvement does cost me gold. It's true. But once you connect um, your cities to your capital with a trade route, that gives you a bonus to gold. And so that tends to offset it. And to me, um, that negation of that, you know, uh, that negation of that it allows your units to move really quickly in between cities and so if you get invaded that's it's invaluable um i've had i've had many invasions or i've been invaded many times in this game and i've been able to uh to quash them simply because i was able to rapidly rapidly get the units that i was training in my capital out to my um out to my cities that were in danger on my borders so as you can see arabia is having a little bit of a combat with with barbarians in this area which i don't mind um less work that my units have to do so that looks like it's going to be a really good spot looks like it's going to be a really good spot we're going to be able to pick up a lot of land um potentially if you if we're looking at mil uh military strategy uh we may potentially want hmm we may potentially want a city around here using these mountains uh, if we are going to launch an invasion of Arabia. Because there are several ways to win the game. Um, there is the militaristic option, uh, which is, I think, called domination. Uh, let me see. Victory progress. I think I left everything checked. Yeah, so domination. Uh, and how you do that is you capture the capital cities of all the other players. Uh, so, this being a six-player game, I only have five major cities to capture. Really not that uh, far-fetched. Uh, the science victory, uh, that's where you get all the way down to the right side of that big tech tree I showed you back in episode one. And you build the spaceship that launches to Alpha Centauri. In the diplomatic... Uh, in the diplomatic victory option, uh, when the United Nations is eventually built, uh, you gain influence among the city-states and you uh, get voted as the world leader. And that's how you win a di diplomatic victory. Uh, cultural. Uh, cultural is all about tourism. Um, later on in the game, we're going to have things called great works. Uh, as you can see, we have three great work slots available. Once we start getting great artists um, and uh, specialized great artists, they, they specialize the artists now. Now you get great writers, you get great uh, musicians, um, art artists obviously as painters and things like that. And uh, you create great works which help generate tourism and then other buildings help generate tourism. And, and tourism is, a, is sort of a, a passive way to uh, culturally invade other uh, other countries it's basically like you know you want your you want uh you want your cultural influence uh to to completely overlap 
uh, the local culture of the other countries in the game. Uh, so if I bring up... Is it under Victory Progress? Uh, do I go into Cultural? No. Uh, where is it? 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 I do not see it. There we go. I go into here. Uh, so these are the guys that uh, we know. We don't have any tourism output. Uh, so all of this is, is nil. But basically, uh, the other two players, once we meet them, are going to show up here too. And in order to get a cultural victory, uh, all five of these uh, countries, our cultural inf influence is going to have to outweigh um, their own cultural influence in their own country. And so there's there's two there's two types of culture. There's defensive culture, uh, which is this bar basically. Uh, the more social policies you have, the more culture you're getting per, per turn. Um, the better your country's culture is going to be at fighting off tourism. And then the more tourism you have, the better your country's culture is going to be at uh, invading other countries' culture. So it's it's a very, very interesting, interesting addition to the game. The old way of cultural cultural victory was simply you complete, um, you totally complete uh, five branches of social policies. Uh, so completely... Yeah, so you totally complete, say, liberty, tradition, you know, exploration, rationalism, you know, exploration is a new one, and like patronage, and then you construct some sort of utopia monument. I only, I only uh, beat the game like that one time, and it was, to be perfectly honest, it was, it was a rather boring way to win the game, because eventually you're just sort of, okay, ending turn, uh, you only, you only have, uh, the more cities, the more cities you have, uh, the higher the denominator, uh, the de Jesus, I'm having troubles here. The denominator uh, for for the social policies, the higher that goes, the more city you have, uh, the more cities you have. So uh, you end up. I remember. I remember the the game uh, play. I I basically just had a tiny little city in in the corner of a in the corner of a continent or a tiny little country in the corner of a continent. And I was at the end. You know, you're just sort of ending turns, and it's not too fun like that. I like playing more of a aggressive military style i definitely feel like we're going to be invading arabia at some point um just because that's typically how it happens and look at this we have been gifted a catapult as you can see uh, because we're friends with these guys and because they are a militaristic city state uh, the benefit of being friends with them is that they will gift you units and this so happens to be an extremely powerful unit when it comes to sieges. Now, we're in no position to even begin thinking about invading Arabia yet, uh, simply because we don't have swordsmen, uh, which we're definitely going to need. Um, Arabia is going to have horses, most likely, uh, so we're going to want spearmen, which we don't have yet, or at least haven't been building yet. Uh, so... We do have a ways to go yet, but that catapult, hey, that's one less unit for us to build because later on we're going to be able to upgrade it to a trebuchet and things like that. Okay, so this next technology in Liberty, uh, I don't have, there's, there's two different branches, okay? Uh, we get plus one happiness for each city you own connected to your capital and minus five percent unhappiness from citizens in non-occupied cities. Uh, we don't have any cities connected to the capital, so this one doesn't help us too much just yet. Uh, this one, uh, each city you found will increase the culture cost of policies by 33% less than normal. So like I was saying before, the more cities you have, the higher this goes. This will uh, decrease the amount that that goes up because of the number of cities. So that's really helpful. And it also starts a golden age for free. So we're going to get a major boost to gold that you're going to notice, and we're also... Uh, if you look at, okay, there's two turns there. That's not going to be a good example. But there's six turns left of uh, uh, the library. Once I hit this, when we enter a golden age, as you can see, we've got ten turns. It lasts ten turns. I was wrong. Um, well, this <laughs> wasn't a very wasn't a very good example. But we did get, uh, we, we did get a, you're going to notice it later in the game that there's going to be a bigger, more drastic change. I was sort of funny. I wasn't expecting it to be so small. Uh, normally, it's much larger. Uh, <laughs> um but uh, yeah, there's, there, there was a, there was a change, and uh, the production is going to go up. It's rather funny that that, that that was such a minor, 
minor change as far as uh, production and gold is rather disappointing. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. So we've got uh, we've got line of sight on Packle fighting off some barbarians outside his border. Ooh, he's got a barbarian hand axe. It's the slightly better version of of that warrior guy. Uh, so we'll go here. We'll create that road. Uh, do I have a line of sight on his capital yet? I don't think so. I think his capital was down a pinch. There it is. Okay. So we're one turn away from getting the Oracle. That's going to give us a free social policy. And actually, you know what? That's going to let us complete liberty. So we're going to be able to get that next turn, uh, which is going to complete the liberty tree altogether, uh, uh, which is going to grant us a free great person. Um, so we'll talk about them. We'll talk about them. Next turn, and this guy continues to fight them off. Interesting, he doesn't seem to be... Uh, they've got spearmen, and I and I have not been training spearmen, so that's a little bit worrisome. So we get the oracle. Who did we complete this for? I swear to you, we completed it for someone, did we not? Was it not this guy? We completed it for you. Yes, we completed it for Manila. Anybody else? Didn't we already do that? Okay, so we completed it for Manila. That's fine. I don't mind that. Um, they're a little bit further down. They've got gold, so if they want to be allies with us, that'd be fun. I wouldn't mind taking their gold. Uh, okay, so let's do this without further ado. Uh, we should get plus one happiness simply because the capital is technically connected to the capital. Um, and then once these two roads are finished uh, construction, we're going to have a road straight from this city to this one. And we're going to get another bonus to happiness there. So now we get to choose a great person. Uh, like I said, uh, they've added a bunch. Uh, this used to be uh, just great artist. Uh, but now with the great works, there's different types of great works you can make to uh, create tourism. Um, and so there's, you know, there's there's great written works, so you can get Shakespeare. There's great mu uh, musical works, so you can get Beethoven. Um, and then there's great paintings and things like that. So you can get Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, I've gotten before. Um, then there's the great scientist. This guy will help you with research. Let's see what our research uh, fraps is blocking me because I've got my my uh, frames per second counter up here. But we've got 18 science per turn. That's not a lot of science. And so I'm thinking that the great scientist is actually going to be the most beneficial to us um, because he's going to be able to build something called an academy. But I am going to talk about the other ones for you. Uh, we've got the great merchant. Um, there's a couple of good... Uh, good uh, uh, qualities to the great merchant. He can create a tile improvement that'll give you a big boost of gold. Now, we certainly do need gold, don't get me wrong, but we're just about to uh, uh, complete the technology uh, currency, which is going to allow us to build markets, and that's going to boost our gold and, and get our economy going in the right direction. Um, then, of course, there's great engineers. Uh, they, I like to use them for rushing constructions of wonders that I really want. Uh, great generals give uh, combat bonuses to troops in the vicinity, uh, but they are defenseless, so you need to guard them with, with your troops. Uh, great admirals are the same thing, just for ships. And then great writer and great musician are summed up with the great artist. Uh, so I do think that we're going to go with the great scientist. So who did we get? I have no idea who that is. So if you do know who that is, <laughs> feel free to tell me. Um, all right, so we're going to... That's a jungle and a hill. Where are we going to construct this thing? Let's construct it. I guess we'll, we'll go where they want me to go. Or maybe we'll go down there, because then it'll still have two food. I think that's where I'm going, going to want to go. Because uh, then that that tile will still have food to output. Uh, this guy will continue walking down here. I want to see how we're connected uh, to this side of the continent. I'm guessing that's where the other players are going to be. So I'm going to walk around 
Packles territory and see how east, how much more east I can go. Uh, so here we were going to start building settlers because we want to start expanding. Uh, and you're not going to be done that just yet. Oh geez, they throw their axes. That's barbaric. Okay, you are going to go build a pasture up here, or no, I'm going to send you actually down here uh, to start building pastures for these guys. Maybe we'll send you to do the plantation first. Temporarily, you're going to move out of the way because these are both citizen units. So that's going to give us plus eight science. And that's huge. We're definitely going to want to make sure that... Oh, of course, that's going to make you out of turns. But we're definitely going to want to make sure that we're working on that one. So, as you can see, that's plus eight science. We were only getting 18.5 before. That's that's a major, major difference. Um, and so that's going to be hugely beneficial early on. Hugely beneficial. Uh, I don't want you locked here anymore because we do want to start growing. So let's get you here. How does that continue stagnation? Oh, of course, because we're constructing a settler. And uh, settlers prevent the city from growing while they're being constructed. Uh, cause we, and it makes sense because uh, you're, you're basically taking people from your population to go settle a new city. Why would your city still be growing if you're taking from it? Uh, so it does make it does make sense, you know. Gotta give give the game credit where credit is due. All right. So we're one turn away from currency, and then we should be finishing up construction. The only unfortunate thing is that we're about to found a new city, which will mean that we're not able to get the national college spat out. Um, before, because the National College requires that the library be built in every single city of yours. We got a free library when we did the uh, the Great Library here. See, now that road is done, and there should be a little connected symbol that will show up under this guy next turn, and this should go up one, maybe? Why not? <laughs> uh, why didn't that happen? Why did that not happen? I've got no idea why that didn't happen. Only one zero from global social policies. I've got no idea. That should maybe maybe they're maybe they're wanting me to uh, have a bridge there. I don't know. That's very very confusing. So how much did this go up? We only went up to that. Eh? Your maritime city, so they boost food in the capital. Which is probably why our settler is being trained so fast. Two turns away from him. So I think we decided that we we're going to go here first. That's going to give us another die resource. Another die resource. Uh, so we're going to be able to trade that. Once we go up here. Oh, that's right. That is marble. Hmm. Okay. Which is going to be very valuable because unique resources are going to be boosting our happiness. Uh, okay, so you, do we jump the gun and start constructing a road out this way? I think that may be what I want to do. So I'm going to show you a new, uh, a new feature for you guys. So that guy is going to automatically construct a road instead of me manually doing so here because I have two guys and I wanted to make sure that they met up. So this library is finished. Let's start correcting our a currency situation. Oh, now, now the uh, city's connected. Now we should be a uh, one from cities connected to capital. That's what was missing. I don't know why that didn't. Because did I not end the turn, or did maybe I'm just crazy? Maybe I'm crazy and I didn't end the turn. But I was pretty sure that I did. So there's this root two button. Uh, the reason I didn't do it before, like I said, was because I was coming at it from both both directions. And if you do this, then maybe this guy wants to go this way and this guy wants to go this way for some reason. And they don't meet up. Um, but I'm going to route two. And he's going to automatically build a road here, 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 and here probably. Or here, 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 here. Uh, whichever he chooses. But 
I want roads connecting this tile to this tile, and then we're going to found the city here, and the city automatically has a road in it. So the settler, we're going to move right down here, unfortunately, because of the rough terrain that's going to take five turns. Uh, so let's continue moving you east. Continue moving you east. Now let's say that I did go National College. It's going to take him five turns to get there. I don't want him sitting around doing nothing for five turns. Oh, that's very interesting. It creates a copy of each type of military land unit you control and places the unit near the city where the Terracotta Army is constructed. Wow. I did not know that. That's a, that's a fairly new wonder. I think it was Brave New World. It might have been Gods and Kings, actually, but uh, certainly not one that I've been going after, clearly. Otherwise, I would have known that. All right, so let's continue to get the currency situation flushed out. I do want to be able to sail. Uh, but it's not overly necessary just yet. If we are going to invade Arabia, perhaps it's civil service we want for pikemen. Why do we see... Why do we see land chains? <laughs> I'm so confused. That's a that's a German unique unique unit. Uh, last time I checked, we're not German. I guess that's a mercenary or something they're saying. Um, new something new that I'm not overly aware of. So we're gonna go for iron working just so that we can open up the ability to train swordsmen. To train swordsmen, I really don't think two swordsmen is gonna cut it though, as far as an invasion goes. So perhaps we need to wait until later in the game. So we've met a couple. I think a couple. Uh, it's a cow. Maybe we met them last turn and I wasn't on the ball. Uh, we met a couple of city-states. If you end the turn... Oh, that's not a city-state. That's more Packle. Okay. If you end the turn in the territory of a city-state, uh, they will hate your guts for it. So I'm going to intentionally not do that, even though that's more forward progression than the path I chose. Okay, so we've got our settler moving over to the east. This guy's constructing his plantation. What do we got? Arabia wants to exchange embassies with me. Which is nice. That's more of a peaceful thing. Um, and I am concerned about his intentions. Um, but sure, I'll do that. That'll reveal his capital to me too, which will be nice. Hmm. I don't like seeing this. Um, that makes his capital extremely defendable. Extremely defendable, because there's only going to be three melee units that I can have facing him at any one time. However, lots of grassland over here, so my units are going to be able to move into those positions quickly. And these are all rough terrain. So if I get my melee unit set up here, they're going to get bonuses um, if they're fortified from the bombardment that they're going to face from the city and most likely from the archer that he'll have stationed on his city. They'll get terrain uh, benefits from that. And then I'm also going to be able to quickly move up uh, say the catapults and things like that because this is all grassland. So even though he gets the benefit of being next to water, I'm the one that's going to benefit from these tiles and these tiles as well. Uh, so if we do invade Mecca, if we do invade Mecca, uh, it will be interesting. I don't know, I definitely don't think I'd want three swordsmen at least, uh, so that two iron is not going to cut it. That two iron is not going to cut it. Hmm. Do one of... Yes, you have two iron. Okay. Because if I become allies with your Revan, then they're going to send me that other two iron. And that may be enough to turn the tide. Milan also has iron. But we're neutral with them. Did I not? Oh, no, it was Manila. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So if we do go that route, obviously we'll we'll become allies with your Revan. Also, when uh, when you're allies with a city state and you declare war on someone, oh, 
that was counterintuitive. Whatever. It's only going to be like negative five, and then they'll forget about it after a while. Plus, they're far away. Who cares about them? Um, but uh, when you declare war on someone, all of your city-state allies uh, will declare war on that person as well, and their city-states will declare war on you. And without further ado, we've got Alexander the Great. Uh, this guy is a warmongering prick, but the good news is that he's very, very, very far from me. He does have copper, and he does need silver and dye, uh, which is the only reason it would be visible. If he had silver, um, I wouldn't see silver in his luxury resources option, and he wouldn't see silver in mine, because there's no point in reacquiring something you already have that's not going to add to your happiness, so the computer doesn't let you see it. So if you're, if you're wondering, if, if, you, if you have extra silver and you open the, the dialogue with somebody and you can't trade it with them, it's because they have silver already. Um, okay, so he has copper. I want the copper. Uh, but I'm going to need to have something to trade back. One gold per turn isn't going to cut it. The price for luxury resources that the computer settles for seems to be seven gold per turn if you're on good standing with someone. Uh, so we're going to have to wait to get that copper, and it's not really urgent. We've got, we've got seven. Um, yes, that's going to go down. As you can see, we got negative six for that, but that's fine. He'll forget about it in a few turns. Uh, did you... I guess your capital is going to be somewhere around here. Did you have the option? You probably did. And I just talked around it. Yeah, you're going to give me give me an embassy. Well, there's your copper right there. <laughs> and he also has got, he's got dyes. Uh, but he has not improved it, which is why that's very interesting. I could probably capitalize on that if I construct my die. If I construct my plantation before he does, I would be able to trade him something that he's going to inevitably not need. Uh, capitalize on on the uh, the computer's stupidity. Uh, but I do think that I'm going to be able to trade dies with, with Mecca anyways, because uh, I don't think I've seen dies down there. Okay, our scout continues to move. So we've met Alexander... Um, uh, is this Denmark or is this uh, yeah so the Danes the Danes are down here uh, and so I'm guessing number six and our final competitor is going to be somewhere in this direction our caravan has completed the trade route with Yerevan and as you can see our economy is hurting that it's not uh, still going. Interestingly, interestingly enough, geez, that was that was a struggle. Uh, we've now opened the door for trade with Mecca, which is going to give us more gold uh, than our trade with either of these guys, um, and it's also going to give us a research per turn. So you can't really go wrong. Yes, it's, it's also going to help them out, uh, but uh, it's going to help us out, and that's what's important. Okay, the city of Memphis wants wine. This will occasionally come up. Uh, when you, If you do succeed in connecting that resource, I think earlier in the game it was uh, Thebes wanted gold. And so if we do end up connecting those resources, then all of a sudden that, um, that city enters into a We Love the King Day or something like that. And I think it gives a bonus to uh, production. Uh, so we're no longer friends with those guys. Um, that kind of sucks because we're no longer going to be getting the benefits from them. I did like that free military unit. Ooh, Melbourne. Got a little bit of Australian representation here. I believe. Right? Yeah, right? <laughs> I, I, I might have just made a fool of myself. I'm pretty sure Melbourne, Australia. Pretty sure. We'll choose production here. Moving on. <laughs> we'll choose production here. Uh, because this guy's so wide open, uh, there's a lot of distance between him and any other civilization. I'm not too concerned about his defense. And he's got a warrior. Yes, that warrior is not a ranged unit, so it's not ideal to have on your city to defend it. Um, 
So we're probably going to move our warrior outside of the city, actually, and onto uh, some tiles that we want to defend. Um, so I think the first thing we're actually going to do is construct a monument, because that's going to boost the culture, it's going to boost the border growth, and we definitely want to be scooping up these food resources to help that city grow even fi quicker. Uh, not thicker. Um, okay, so we've met Melbourne... Greece announces to the world that it's now protecting Melbourne. Yes, that's true. You can uh, go here and you can uh, pledge to protect uh, so that other cities that do not want to declare war on you uh, won't declare war on that particular city-state, even if you're not allies. And then, of course, if they really want to just kind of piss you off and annoy you, they'll declare war anyways and, and ask you what you're going to do about it. They'll chirp you about it. Okay, so where could number six be? We've got a great general over here. We've got Hannibal, uh, Carthaginian, not, not, uh, not for the right faction, but that's just because he's a great person. You get random great people. Um, okay, where are we gonna go next? Let's look at the old tree here. Uh, the OCD in me wants to finish up this era, get sailing down, but again, we really don't need fishing boats. Allows establishing an additional trade route, though. Yeah, we definitely want that. I probably shouldn't have getting that, been getting that earlier. Again, that's just me not not being fully fully aware of of the uh, mechanics of Brave New World. So we definitely want the ability to train another caravan and get another trade route going because that's going to help boost our gold and the whole reason we got currency we wanted to oh we've got china here Wu Zuzian. and it looks like she must be at war with the danes because he's got some he's got some units in the area and we can check that by going to Diplomacy Overview. They got rid of... Civilization Four had a really neat screen uh, where it was your avatar and the avatars of the other players. And then there were lines in between all of the different players uh, that represented uh, their relationship. So if they were allies, the line was, I think, uh, yellow. If they were uh, the vassal state, which is something else that they got rid of that I'm sad they got rid of, uh, the line was uh, blue. And then if they were... Um, neutral, it was green, if they were at war it was red, and it was a really effective screen, and here all we've got is this little thing and you need to scroll and you need to keep um, keep everything memorized, so as you can see, yep China is indeed at war uh, with Denmark so that's the first war I know about of the continent uh, I can't see over here but archers are not going to be enough to bombard a city Unless you've got a lot of them. Because um, I say that, and I have been <laughs> I have been invaded successfully with a spam of archers before. Uh, but it'll be rather telling whether or not there's we see negative signs popping up here, and we don't. So I don't think he's got a good position on on China. So let's go into the um, the in between of these two guys. I wonder if. Does China have other cities? There's a mountain range here. Um, we can check whether or not you have cities. So you've got uh, two other cities other than the capital, because I'm not going to be able to demand that she gives me ownership of her capital. Um, so she's got three cities. How many cities does Denmark have? we go into cities. Only one other city other than your capital. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder who's the aggressor in that. It, well, I mean, it looks like Denmark was. They're the ones invading, but uh, could there could be stuff going on down there too, but I doubt it. Typically, there's only one one country doing the invading in this game. Okay. That's not true. That's not true. If there's multiple fronts, it happens everywhere. Okay, so does this give other trade routes? Where, uh, where do we get more trade routes? Yeah, see, it allows establishing an additional trade route, uh, extends the range of sea trade routes. So where do we get, we got cargo ship with this. Yeah, see, this is, this is stuff that I should, I really probably should have gotten that earlier, but, oh well, that's okay. So now we need to make the decision 
on what we're going to go for. What, what kind of path we're going to take here. If we want to take an aggressive path and invade Mecca, what I'm going to want is I'm going to want Long Swordsman. If I can rush to Long Swordsman, he's considerably stronger, 50% um, uh, stronger than the, than the Swordsman before him. Uh, more expensive, yes, but considerably stronger. And so that's going to turn the tide in an invasion because uh, he's going to be able to withstand more and he's going to be able to dish out more. Uh, the trebuchets over here, which would also be nice. Let's look at the range strength comparison here. 8 to, I think, 12, 14. Wow, okay. You know what? I think we may want to be a little bit aggressive. We may want to be a little bit aggressive. Education is also very important. Mm-hmm. Normally, I like going straight for education before I go down this path. Because uh, education in the long run is going to allow you to... Uh, is going to allow you to research technologies quicker. But if we pay attention... If we play, pay close attention um, to constructing libraries, to making sure our towns grow, because libraries give you a bonus per every two citizens in the city they're in, I believe... Uh, we should be okay. We should be okay in terms of research. And I do want to make sure that we keep up the entertainment value of this game. We certainly, we certainly want things to be interesting. And so I do believe um, that if not in next turn, uh, ne next turn, that if not in uh, the next episode, uh, if we're not invading them in the next episode, uh, we'll certainly be starting to get prepared for it. And perhaps the live stream main event will be an invasion of Arabia. Perhaps. That would be well-timed, if I do say so myself. Alright, interesting that uh, China, they've got a city down here, which is probably going to be a less... Um, a lesser city in terms of strength, and yet Denmark seems to be going around the mountain pass, uh, straight to the capital. Um, Denmark does not have the unit strength to do this. I'm going to move in for a kill shot here. Where is this guy coming from? Are you coming from there? I'm going to, I mean, after I kill this guy, I'm going to go check that out just to see. Just to see and be sure that he's not... That he's not coming from there. Because um, that's just going to be a nuisance. So Arabia wants to be my friend. <laughs> Here we are talking about invading him, taking his capital from him. And he wants to be our friend. Um, I'm going to say no, simply because uh, we are planning on invading him. If I were to say yes, and then all of a sudden you invade your friend... Um, other civilizations take note of that, and they don't take too kindly to that. Um, they tend to look down upon people who backstab to such an extent. Uh, so we're going to weaken this guy considerably, and then we're going to move in for the kill on you. And this is Deadly Club. This is our original warrior. There you go. I think it was. Deadly Stick was the second guy, I believe. So more impassable, very almost like a rocky mountain type uh, type mountain range here. Very interesting. Uh, I do like I, I believe I said before I, I love having mountains. Um, I love having having mountains within my territory, um, simply because it, it allows for such a strategic uh, defense. Like say say this was a civilization that wanted to invade me um, from up here. Um, they would either have to take the long way around here, or they would have to come down this bottleneck. And so I'd be able to, say, set up a melee unit here. He couldn't go around me. He'd have to go through me. And then I could set up ranged units here to, to volley over him. And so it's very very strategic having, having mountains here. Uh, having mountains here. And if this is indeed a lake, um, that's also very strategic for Mecca. Um, having a city up against 
the ocean uh, not so much because now um, ships can actually, melee ships can actually uh, capture a city, which is something new to uh, Brave New World. So now we see why these two are at war. Uh, China, <laughs> China moved, China's uh, second expansion was right next to the Denmark capital. And like I said before, that's the kind of thing that just automatically, it's an automatic war when that kind of thing happens. Now this is interesting. This is interesting, you see. Um, Arabia has moved the minimum distance away from my city. Um, which I don't appreciate, to be perfectly honest. I don't appreciate it one bit. I mean, we were already we're already planning to invade them anyways, but but that that just sort of that's that's the icing on the cake right there. That's uh, that just sort of seals the deal in my mind. Uh, if I wasn't certain before, I'm certainly certain now. Certainly certain. There you go. You heard it here first. Okay. Where are we in terms of production? Uh, we've got a mint being constructed here, which is another boost to our economy. Afterwards, I think we're going to make one more settler to get them settled up here so that we can start getting this area sorted out. And then that's when I'm going to start making... Uh, building our building up our military building up our military let's possibly in here would be a neat place mm-hmm mm-hmm okay yeah more more battles going on yeah I really because I mean if I was if I was Denmark uh, this would have been the city that I targeted first I wouldn't have been sending units Certainly not a great general up up to the capital. That's biting off more than you can chew. Uh, at certain times, going for the capital first, like, you know, this capital is right here. It's right in front of us. Our border is right here, so we're going to be able to launch from right here. Um, it makes sense to go after the capital first because you bite off the head. You've basically killed everything else. But um, if I were to start going after Damascus first, uh, it doesn't make sense because then you then that he's probably going to launch an invasion from his capital uh, in that case. Okay, so where's our scout? Our scout's down here. Let's continue moving this way. I get a good idea of this territory, because these are a couple of fairly militaristic uh, uh, countries. When two civilizations wage war like this at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of the game, it's important to keep your eye out. The other thing I would recommend don't side with either of them. <laughs> if either of them ask for a declaration of friendship or things like that, do not say yes. Because what tends to happen in the early goings of the game, like we're still BC here, um, well, one of these guys is going to win. And when you win uh, this early in the game, when the city, when the civilization wins this early in the game, uh, they turn into a powerhouse because they've just swallowed up another country. Uh, you may, we may end up seeing Denmark capture these two cities and then China being left with one. Uh, we may see something vastly different. We may see China win. Um, hell, like, it could happen that it's, it's a stalemate um, and they become really good friends down the road. Uh, but you, you don't want to take the risk that you're going to pick the wrong horse in the race. Uh, that's that's my recommendation to you. You don't want to pick the wrong horse in the race because that'll come back to bite you. If the strongest civilization um, on the on the continent uh, is left over and he knows that you sided with the enemy or she knows in Wu Zixian's case, um, you're gonna be you're gonna be in trouble. You're gonna be in trouble. They're not going to be very happy with you. Uh, there might be some denouncements in your near near future. And what happens? is particularly if they're more powerful than you, then the other countries uh, will start denouncing you too because they want to be close uh, with that country. As you can see, in terms of score, we're second. Arabia. Oh, that's, I didn't... I don't think that it used to break it down for the other civilizations. It definitely always did for you. I don't think it always did uh, for for the... For the other countries so we are more technolo technologically advanced than them 
Um, they're getting more score from population. More from wonders. A little bit more from uh, policies. And then the big kicker is from religion. Because uh, we have not founded a religion, and they have. They're the holy city for Islam. That actually, <laughs> well, that makes sense. Um, of course, they can found any city in, or they can found any religion in the game. Uh, uh, any any civilization can found any religion in the game, and I always find it particularly amusing uh, when Mecca becomes the holy city for Judaism. I always I always find that quite quite humorous. Uh, so, now that we're done liberty, we've got to decide what other path we're going to go down. Honor is more, really, it's more for dealing with barbarians, which is, like, there's some really neat policies. There's some really neat policies um, that, that can be particularly beneficial, um, but, I mean, the, the big bonus right off the bat is a combat bonus versus barbarians and i just find liberty the the strategic advantages of being given a free worker and being given a given a free settler that allows you the freedom uh to build world wonders early on and and a couple of the early world wonders um like i've said about the great library uh are particularly useful so we've got a couple options here we're not religious so going down piety wouldn't make sense Going down tradition, we've already gone down liberty, and they're sort of counterintuitive to one another. This one supports a small civilization. This one supports a, an expanding one. Um, that's not to say that this wouldn't be beneficial, but this would give me stuff more more towards culture and growth uh, within the capital. This one down here, I don't think I've ever gone down, because this is a new one. This is a new one. Um, uh, added to the game in Gods and or not Gods and Kings, Brave New World. Okay, so it allows us to construct. So when we initially get it, um, allows us to earn great writers, artists, and musicians twenty five percent faster. It unlocks whatever building that is. I've got no idea. Um, whenever we build cultural buildings, uh, we do so fifty percent faster. That's nice. 50% uh, of excess happiness is added to the amount of culture up here. So we've got two excess happiness. So we'd be getting 13 culture once we get that one. Uh, culture is increased by 33% in all cities which have built a world wonder. And we immediately enter a golden age. That's nice. A uh, great artist appears. Always useful. It's a free great, great work. Why not? And that increases the tourism modifier for shared religion, trade routes, and open borders by 15% each. <laughs> and then when we adopt all the policies, uh, the, we double the theming bonus we receive from Museums and Wonders. And it also allows the purchase of great writers, artists, or musicians with faith. That's interesting. Um, normally I go through, I go down the commerce path uh, second. And that's normally unlocked by then because I typically don't go after the Oracle. And so we've, we're a social policy ahead. This is normally in the game when I'd be doing what we did last time, getting, getting the great scientist. Um, which is another reason why we can afford to not go down university because we have an academy that we're using. Uh, okay, so I guess, yeah, why not? Why not? Let's, let's, let's try it out. Let's try it out. So new unit order, or unit orders are needed, rather. Ivory, another happiness resource. Got to kill those elephants and take their tusks. Terrible, terrible people in this game. Okay, so let's make you, so as you can see, our road is now connected. Uh, he did the second of the two options I suggested he would. He's going to construct dies. Uh, we've got you constructing a Past, or constructed a pasture there. Let's get you to construct one here so that this can continue to grow. Once you're done the market, look at how fast you're growing, eh? I guess uh, I guess you get a lot of food from cattle. We'll get even more food from you once we build a work boat. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We do need to increase happiness. I am concerned about increasing happiness. Uh, so potentially, if you still haven't constructed that plantation by the time that I construct mine, although it's probably doubtful at this point, because um, I do know that he has copper to trade, right? Kiev, you're the ally of China. Mm-hmm. So it looks like if I'm going to put money, put money on this one with that addition, that means there's going to be more units of support. Uh, Guangzhou is under attack. Uh, you can see the health bar of the city going down. So that's something to keep an eye on. If Denmark takes that city, then I'd put my money on him. But if they fail, uh, because China has the support of a close by city state. Um, it really could go either way. It all depends on whether this is a success for fit or failure. It all depends on that. Although this is an extremely defendable city. Look at that mountain range here, mountains here, one melee unit tile available to the front. And he's got somebody defending this flank. Um, very strategic. <laughs> I'm, I'm very impressed. Very impressed at that unit placement by the computer. Um, perhaps that's something that they've, uh, upgraded. Okay, so we've got, uh, we're, we're, all, we're all out of time here. Uh, so I'm just going to trigger the next round of construction. This is having a lot of production issues, this area. Uh, I didn't quite think of that when I founded it. We've got the production here. It would be nice to have a forge or something along the lines of that. Um... So what we're going to do next, this would give us a bonus to, sorry, this would give us a bonus to the bananas. Um, a stable is what we want. A stable is what we want. Uh, we are going to be a little bit of ways away from that because the stable's here. And it's going to give us a production bonus to horses, sheep, and cattle. So we're going to see a big benefit here because of all the cattle. And then we're going to see a huge benefit here because of all the sheep in this area. This is basically the New, Z New Zealand <laughs> of, uh, of our civilization. These guys got sheep too. Jeez, there's a lot of sheep. People are going to be talking. People are going to be talking. Okay. Um, we can make pizza, but um, that's really only beneficial if there's a lot of uh, desert tiles around you. Uh, I don't really need you growing any quicker than you already are. So let's, no, 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 no. Let's, let's get you to build another catapult. No, so we'll get you starting the invasion force. And then that's going to be it for now. So this is, you're going to be watching this one on Thursday. I've got a break now because it's Wednesday and Canada's about to play Latvia. I'll be very upset if we lose Latvia, but you know, Latvia's been playing pretty well, so we can't take them lightly. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow.